So it has been a hot fucking minute since I've done <laughs> one of these car exposure videos. Oh god. Uh, if you guys have seen my um, Instagram posts, you'll know that I had kind of a relapse, I guess, with my agoraphobia. Pretty badly, in fact. Um, so even driving my daughter to daycare, which I'm not kidding, is about two minutes from my house, I was unable to do. And um, going out in the car with Anthony, couldn't do it. So it kind of feels like I'm like having to do those baby steps again. Um, so anyway, the, the basic premise of today is that uh, Melbourne has finally opened back up again in terms of retail. So yesterday was the first day since like June, I think, that retail had been open. Um, and so I'm technically, I'm supposed to be back at work already. I work in retail, I work for a skincare company um, at a major shopping center, which is about 20 minutes roughly from my house. Uh, and back in the day when I was agoraphobic, uh, it took me, maybe from the time I started doing exposure sessions, I'm gonna say it took me around nine or so months to get to this shopping center. <laughs> it was like a big goal of mine. Um, so yeah anyway because I'm supposed to be back at work but I've been very open with my company about what I'm going through at the moment and how I'm really struggling to get out of the house uh, and I'm really lucky that I work for a company that are very supportive and very understanding um, and so they they are supporting me with with me taking the time that I need <laughs> so I initially was worried that I wouldn't be able to go back to work like for months because you know I was like I can't even drive to the corner store at the moment how am I gonna drive the the 20 to 25 minutes to work every day um, so I was I was nervous but in the last couple of days with the support of people on Instagram and of my family and friends I'm feeling like I know how to do this. Even though I am struggling with agoraphobia again, I know that it's possible to get to a, you know, a normal place, normal for me anyway, um, because I was there. So, and I know the exact steps that I took to get there the first time, and if I have to do them again, which, don't get me wrong, I'm fucking furious that I have to do them again, but I, I know what I have to do. So really, all that is, is facing the, the things that scare me. Ugh. <laughs> and being totally honest with you guys, the last couple of times I've gone in the car over the last like three weeks, there was once I had to go pick up my dog from the groomers um, and I can't remember another time I drove somewhere else, maybe for an appointment or something, I can't remember. But anyway, I screamed the whole way there and back, screamed, um, just this primal, scary screaming because I was so angry and I had so much fear coursing through my body and so much emotion and I felt so hopeless and I just, I just had to scream. Um, and then I would come home from those drives and I would cry my eyes out and I would uh, usually fall asleep not long after that as well because I was just exhausted. And it was, I kept saying to Anthony, like this is the, the hardest thing. It's some of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I've, again, I've already done these. <laughs> I don't want to do them again. Uh, so yeah. Today, I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna scream, I'm gonna film instead and I'm gonna make it an exposure video. Maybe it'll help someone else going through the same thing. So I've been kind of thinking about this all day 
I'm like, okay, I'll drive to Doncaster, which is where I work. Um, I'll drive to the shopping centre where I work to kind of get back in the habit of, of driving there. Um, because it's been so long, like, because Melbourne has been in lockdown for so long, we weren't allowed to go further than five kilometres from home. I haven't been anywhere in months. Um, I certainly haven't been to this shopping centre in, in months. So I really was out of practice um, with with the habit of driving there. Whereas, you know, back when I was, back when pre-COVID, when I was working and things were normal, I was in the habit of going there all the time. So it just, it, you know, the drive was never that stressful for me. Whereas now it is like, terrifying um which is why I'm rambling <laughs> because I there's just it's like ah, there's so much in my body that I just have to like get it out um but anyway yeah I've been playing with the idea all morning of like should I go to the shops should I not go to the shops should I go to the shops should I not go to the shops and then um I was kind of like okay no I won't I won't go to the shops and I find that when I take the pressure off there's this other little part of me that's like go to the fucking shops you know like it just it's like do it you can do it you know like and I I, I want to chase that feeling afterwards of when you feel so accomplished and when you feel so good and you're like I did it I did it today I really want to have that feeling today because I've been spending all my time feeling so hopeless and so shit and hating myself and the thing is if it doesn't work out if you know three minutes from now I have a complete breakdown and I have to go home I'm not going to be any worse off than I have been the last couple of weeks to be honest so wow I, it, everything looks different because I haven't been out in so long um so yeah it was either stay home and feel as dejected as I have been lately and not be any closer to getting my life back to normal or attempt it put myself through some scary shit and maybe come home feeling really great about it which is what I'm going for the interesting thing that I've been struggling the most this time around with agoraphobia back in the day for me it was feeling I, like I always felt sick in the car but mostly it was feeling like I was going to shit my pants you guys know this, I've said it so many times toilet anxiety was a massive thing for me um, because when my gut turns and because I have IBS so I know that when my gut turns generally it's like I, I need to shit now <laughs> I've got to go now <laughs> so um, god my train of thought just went uh, yeah so usually it's it's that that churning in my gut and that's what it was predominantly for me back the first time with agoraphobia it was the feeling of sick feeling sick but mostly feeling scared that um you know what if I needed the bathroom and I'm in the car and obviously there's not a bathroom in the car uh and then <clears throat> this time though it's been that plus this like real obsession with nausea and feeling like I'm gonna vomit which is really weird for me because I don't have a fear of vomiting at all I've never had that thank Christ um I know people who have and I know how difficult that that is so um you know I'm lucky that that was never a big thing for me but for some reason this time round it's like hit me like a ton of bricks and it's not it's not that I'm scared of the act of vomiting but it's that when I feel nauseous it sets off my panic um whereas it used to mostly just be that if I felt my gut churning in the sense of like I need the bathroom that would set off my panic but now it's that and feeling nauseous that sets off my panic so really it's it feels harder than the first time round in a way because it feels like there's more symptoms that I have to deal with than initially um, but honestly I will tell you right now I'm doing really well because I can see the shopping centre and I am maybe I don't know I'm really not good at this but maybe five minutes away roughly I don't know um, 
going in there though is going to be another thing altogether because like I said because Melbourne has just opened up yesterday um, I actually did go to the grocery store yesterday after work I forced myself to go the one that's really close to my house um, so it was scary but it wasn't that scary but it was mayhem in there um, people are just so excited to be able to get out of the house which I, I get like we've been it feels like we've been in house under house arrest for nearly nine months so um, yeah I know that the shops are gonna be really really busy so getting there is half the challenge going in and surviving is the other half of the challenge But I will say that on like, you know, a one to 10 of the panic scale, I'm probably only at like a four right now. Four to five, I guess. I'm not, yeah. The, the, the anxiousness, anxiety, Jesus. The anxiety that I'm feeling right now is exactly the same as the anticipatory anxiety that I would have been having all day thinking about doing this. So it's not like I've hit a peak, um, which is quite nice for a change I don't know exactly what my goal is when I get to the shopping centre maybe go get something to eat I don't know I don't know what will challenge me the most the thing is it's it's doing this right now is difficult to a degree but in a way there's no pressure on me right now like like I said if I go home dejected it's no different to what it's been lately whereas it's going to be another thing altogether once I say to them okay I'm ready to go back to work and then I have to you know get in the car in the morning and I have to be at work at a certain time and it's like you know there's so much added pressure then and then that's when it really makes your adrenaline spike which feeds into the panic and is <laughs> <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster right there um, but I'm really what I'm telling myself about that is that I can't think about that right now I'm just gonna have to take it as it comes and if that day comes when I say to them I'm ready to go back to work and the day comes and I, I can't make it it is what it is and I I will just have to keep on trying but I'm not gonna worry about that now because to be honest I already have so much stress and pain in my head that I I don't I don't need any more I'm good um yeah oh my god so I'm actually driving into the car park this is so weird because I haven't done this in so many months oh, it's very strange it's very surreal I don't know if you guys had this as well if other people found this once you know the world opens up again after the, p the pandemic it feels very surreal especially for those of us in Melbourne because honestly we felt like we were never coming out of lockdown um not naming any names but a particular premier for Victoria was you know like dangling it like a carrot in front of us for months maybe we'll come out in two weeks and then oh no you're not coming out again so yeah it feels very strange to finally actually be out and to see so many people and um a bunch of storm clouds have just come over it's been the most beautiful day for the whole day today and right now it's just dark and stormy and scary so anyway i'm gonna mask up and i think i just need to take a fucking breath honestly I feel like I'm going to walk in there and just literally turn around and walk back out again. I can do this. The one thing I've been thinking to myself today, which honestly lately there's been so many thoughts going through my head that it's hard for me to hold on to one particular thought for any length of time, but today I kept trying to just give myself the space to think about this, that this is the only time that I'm going to have this day you know this is the only time in my life that I get this day and you know I've been waiting for days to get better 
but it's like why don't I see what I can do today while I have it instead of waiting for tomorrow to feel better I can't quite put that very articulately because um, I <laughs> have no brain cells left right now after that drive but uh, yeah basically I just I want to do something positive with today because it's the only time that I'm ever gonna have this particular day in my life I did it. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so proud of myself. I walked around. There are actually heaps of shops that weren't open, which was really reassuring because it made me feel like I'm not the only person who's like terrified about things going back to normal. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it didn't feel as overwhelming as I thought it would. I got a bubble tea, which I haven't had since, I don't know, January which is great um, and just got some groceries really <sighs> oh my god I am like the reason I'm sweaty is because honestly I think I was walking so fast in there um, but I was in there for a good two hours I want to say hour and a half so it definitely was a um, like a good amount of time it wasn't like I was just in and out as quickly as I could um, I seriously, I could cry. I'm so happy. That had been like hanging over my head. So now I need to practice getting here a bit more. Um, you know, getting here a bit earlier in the day, getting here before nine. But honestly, I think I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay. I haven't said that in six weeks, maybe eight weeks. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've said or felt like I was going to be all right. And <sighs> honestly, exposure sessions, therapy, whatever you want to call them, take a shit ton of courage. But they're worth it because the feeling you get at the end is exhausting, but so, so good. How do I get out of here now? 